happy to be able to announce the build of our new Amoka 60 for the Ocean Race, which is starting in October of 22. We've done two laps of the planet now in the one design, Volvo Ocean 65. You know, when we learned that the Ocean Race was going to be open to a development class, we jumped at the opportunity. <laughs> We're very excited to take this next step in the custom design and build process. It's been a challenge, um, but one that we've welcomed and we're really excited about. It's great to be partnered with 11th Hour Racing for this construction process because as members of the marine industry, um, you know, we feel responsible to help move the needle for sustainable practices um, in boat building and operations. It's really at the core um, of every decision that we make in this campaign and the building and design process is no exception. The footprint of the build represents, especially in the earliest stages of the campaign, a significant percentage of our overall impact. When we understand more about where those impacts are coming from, that's where, that's our opportunity. Basically, we get to engage those suppliers and come up with collaborative solutions. The challenge that we have in front of us, taking an Amoka 60 and turning it into a fully crewed ocean race boat is something that no one's ever done before. And that, to me, is the most exciting part of this campaign. We feel like we have a really good team around us. Uh, Mare Concept, Francois Gabar's outfit in Concano, France, is our technical partner. They're helping manage a lot of the design aspects of the campaign. They're very familiar with the Amoka 60. Francois himself won the Vendée Globe in 2012. And uh, Pivia, a team that they're managing currently, has a good crack at this next go-round. Guillaume Verdier and his team take on the role of naval architects. Um, they've drawn the lines for many successful Amokas of the past. And we have CDK building our boat. It's really nice to be able to center the project in Brittany. Um, so all in all, we feel like we have a good team. When we started construction of the new boat in November, we had to make a tool and a mold. And then we started laying up this spring and um, we're set to launch this boat in June of 2021. So I'd say the two biggest differences between the boat we're designing and building and a boat that's going to do the Vendée Globe are uh, the crew number and the way that we're going to drive the boat. Traditional Amoka 60s are designed for short-handed sailing, either single or double-handed. Um, you know, for us, we're going to be racing with five crew members and one onboard reporter, so it's a lot of people to fit in a small space, and livability has been a big focus of ours as we've designed this new boat. Short-handed sailing uses a smart autopilot, and the ocean race rules say that there's a heading-only autopilot. So we've had to discover a way to drive the boat more frequently than people do in a short-handed configuration. Uh, to do that, our boat is uniquely designed with steering wheels, which give the sailors an advantage when driving the boat for long periods of time. And uh, one of the exciting challenges was to merge the two cultures, the solo-handed French one, and uh, the ocean race, the, the Volvo ocean race culture. And the first example is for the frontal visibility of the cockpit. On our French boat, I would say the visibility is very shitty. The guys uh, don't really need to look uh, forward, they just need to trim the sails and give the the steering to the autopilot. This boat that we have here has been a really valuable asset for us in terms of understanding how these Amoka 60s work and helping us gather as much information and as experience as we can to roll into the new boat. Uh, this boat uh, race in the TGV with a crew of two people and then the guys bring back the boat to Europe with five crew on board and we noticed a huge gap in terms of performance and loads in the rig and appendages. It was about 20%. So I think for this project we spent maybe three times the time working on the cockpit. We did a, a, a full-scale mock-up in the yard, so the guys come and play inside the mock-up. We change it three times and pivot uh, from one concept to another. So I would say, yeah, that was quite a tough job. We're at an incredible point in the campaign. Uh, we have committed to this boat. We're well underway in construction. And we're also here in Newport doing a lot of training. Just last week, we announced three of our new team members, uh, Rob Greenhall, Kyle Langford, and Simon Fisher, all veterans of this race and America's Cup pedigree. And uh, really, the emphasis now shifts toward building our team dynamic as much as we can, developing the performance, and also continuing to work with our title sponsor, 11th Hour Racing. Uh, on you know, trying to integrate sustainability into this process in the industry as much as we can.